So Dave, um, I've got all this gold. Mm -hmm. Can I get a carpet of flying? No. Can I? Can I get a uh, staff of the archmage? No. Sometimes saying no to your players is something you don't want to do, but sometimes you need to do it. Welcome to the Blue Dragon Guild. I'm Baron. I'm Dave. In this video, we're going to be talking about some advice for dungeon masters in the art of saying no. What are your key points for saying no, David? Well, probably balance. Yeah. You want to have a good balance within your game, and you can easily throw that off with a lot of powerful magic items, with too much gold, too much of anything, really. So that's kind of when you want to say no, is uh, at the point when, you know, they get built up a lot of treasure, your party gets a lot of good stuff, particularly later on, and they can just start buying things whenever they need it, and, I mean, it can kind of throw things off a little bit. Yeah, one thing we've experienced in your game that we're running with the Tales of the Yawning Portal, we started it off with the Dragon Heist, mm -hmm. so we went into Yawning Portal with... A good chunk of change mm -hmm. and we're we're able to afford several magic items some of which we have bought that i think maybe you later on have thought i wish i hadn't have done that well kind of but i mean it's kind of our it's it's a weird double-edged sword because now you can kind of take on a party that's got these extra things can kind of take on things beyond their regular challenge rating but at the same time you kind of have to watch it because, you know, they may get hit for a lot more damage than what you're expecting. And that's where the balance comes in. And particularly for inexperienced DMs, like, that can just totally derail you. You can you can throw something at them that you'd think, oh, this is going to be a pretty good challenge for them. And then they just walk right through it. Yep. Or you throw something at them that, like, oh, they're not going to have a hard time with this. And then it's too much because you've put too much stock into that, uh, all the extras that they've got. Yeah. Um one thing that it seems that Tommy always wants is the winged boots, boots of flying, whatever you mm -hmm. want to call them, which in some instances in our games, it's been somewhat of an annoyance on the DM side, but at the same time, it's been kind of a, kind of a time saver because it's like, well, instead of having all of us make all these rolls, have to do all this while well, we failed the rolls, well, mm -hmm. Tommy can just flies over this pit that we don't have to worry about and it's it's been for for game time purposes it's been good because it's like well we can skip all this or we can waste time doing this and you know get less story done it can it can be interesting because uh there are and that, that's a good point there there particularly with yawning portal in the uh, white blue mountain there's a part where you have to go from platform to platform. And with someone that can fly, you're like, oh, that's great. And you just zip them across. Yeah. However, in that same dungeon, there's a tunnel that you have to cross. There's, like, no friction. So if you, like, jump on it, you just keep sliding along. But what's interesting is, and even says in the book, no flying magic works. Yeah. So as a DM, you can kind of throw that in there if you need to, just to make it interesting, because sometimes the overpowered, well, not overpowered, but if you've got, like, level five characters with very rare magic items, then that's going to give them advantages they mm -hmm. would normally have oh, at yeah. that level. Oh, yeah. They can throw off, like, puzzles or, or kind of gimmicky things like that. Yeah. Uh, one thing that I always experience in my games is people are wanting to do these kind of off-the-wall things that normally normally you wouldn't be able to do but as a as a dm i like to try and accommodate that because it'll either make it more cinematic for the party for that player but there are times when it's like um in the situation that we're in you wouldn't be able to do that and you know 9.5 times out of 10 you know the player's understanding and you know just rolls with it but there are some times when saying yes is a good thing to do as well. And I think you could tie in to both saying yes and saying no with your goal should probably be 
the story. Unless you're doing something kind of experimental, like you guys just want to test out stuff. Mm -hmm. But in general, if you've got like a campaign, you're like, all right, we're going to commit to this, then the story should be the most important thing. And that's when you want to say maybe no to something, but also say yes to something. And sometimes when you might want to say yes is if a character has a specific goal they're trying to achieve, whether it's necessarily getting Tommy a, a boots of flying or whatever, yeah. wind boots, <laughs> or if it's, uh, you know, something like uh, getting, a, I don't know, something not magical, like a piece of property maybe, or just uh, uh, your character did uh, the thing with the socks. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, the situation he's referencing is uh, our characters had a wish. Tommy wished for infinite wealth. Yeah, uh, I I don't remember what Orsk wished for. Uh, probably something. Either. Probably something with this forest. Yeah. Uh, my character <laughs> wished for. Um, Actually, I don't think I took the wish. Yeah, you might have skipped. I think wish. I skipped it because I didn't want to be indebted to a demon or something yeah. like that. Uh, my character Dath. He wished for the greatest pair of socks, ones that would never get wet, and always keep his feet safe. And it, it was funny going from the contrast of Tommy's, you know, infinite yeah. wealth to my my socks that, you know, just, they were really awesome socks. So, it, Well, and that doesn't usually lead to a lot of, uh, you know, Tommy's over here with an infinite amount of wealth. People take note of that. Yeah. You always got to take note of your socks. Yep. Yeah. Unless they do, but mm -hmm. I mean, that, then they'd be like, oh, that's pretty cool. So, you got, man. That, that's one good instance of just saying yes to something because... It's uh, memorable. It's, it's memorable for the players and for you. You'll talk about it, you know, years to come. And as the dungeon master in the game, it will give you some plot stuff to build upon. Because now, Tommy's got a whole vault full of gold and it's literally just, it's spilling through his entire house. So now he's got to deal with Thieves Guild, other random people just strolling Subs, up in. Mothers, yeah. yeah. Um, so there's a lot more. There's a lot more opportunity for story in that instance, and pretty much anything that happens in the game, you can spin it into your favor as the DM as a plot point later on. Think about how it's going to affect the next session, and the yep. one after that, and the one after that, and. If it would affect it negatively, then that's probably going to want to say no to that one. Yeah. If it is going to be a positive point, then yeah, I mean, you know, go with it. But uh, I know when I first started the DM, it when you really, I think the first time you DM, you just want to say yes to everything. Oh, absolutely. You just want to, you just want to say yes to everything. Like you know, here here's like a plus three long sword. You're level one. I don't care. It's great. It's fun. <laughs> But that that's kind of cool for the moment, but then you kind of realize later on that really what's so great about D&D is the story building and the character building and the team building and, and the experience of going in there. And particularly if you, and I've seen this actually in a lot of D&D books, where if you just throw out really cool stuff in the beginning, they don't feel like they've earned it. And it yeah. doesn't feel like yeah, it oh, is, yeah. is quite as valuable because there's not that story behind that magic item yeah, or whatever it is. Yeah, had we... Had we not gone through, you know, Dragon Heist and worked to get our reward, the gold, it it wouldn't have uh, wouldn't have had as much an impact on us. I, I don't feel. I know a time when you'd want to say no, homebrew. Right. No to homebrew all the time. So we got homebrew race, no. Homebrew class, no. Magic item, mm, maybe. Monster, mm, maybe. Like homebrew feats, no. Spells, no. Homebrew is one of those things you definitely have to be careful with. We we've all made our own homebrew items. Yeah. I mean that that's something that's a little more you can have a little more liberty with because I mean if it's overpowered you can tell the player like hey that was a bit ridiculous or that was really underwhelming let's let's buff let's buff that up. Um, Races, uh, there's one um, race that I've homebrewed, the Dom Pier, uh, half vampire, if you will, and I've had a couple different players play that, and it's it's pretty balanced. Um, so that that's one that I allow in my games. I guess what I'm thinking is, you can find so many homebrew things online. Yeah, on and. It's yeah. so difficult to tell, you know, maybe they never even, maybe it's never even been play tested once. 
you know, or, or it's made by somebody who just, you know, wants to try to make something overpowering. Yeah. But it's, I guess the, the thing with that is particular balance. Because with classes, that's, or let me say this, with a monster, if you do a homebrew monster, that's not really that big a deal. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, the worst thing you're going to do with that is either give too little of experience points or too many experience points. And that's not really that big a deal. Particularly if you're doing Milestone, then it's almost oh, irrelevant. Yeah. yeah. Then with magic items, and even the books themselves say, you know, these are just, you know, the DM's guide says, these are just some of them. You know, they can, don't go into all the magic items. And if you look at some of the uh, the books for, like, Yon and Portal and some of the others, uh, any of them that run adventures, you'll see, like, magic items that are just so specific oh, you know, what yeah. they do. Oh, yeah. That it's like, you know, so... I guess coming up with homebrew magic items, that doesn't really seem that wild or crazy because, again, you're either getting something, worst case scenario is you're either giving them something that's overpowered too soon or you're giving something that's underpowered too late. I don't know yeah. if that makes sense, but yeah. uh, I think that's, re that's really the only problem. With a class, then you're talking about every session, every time you play, that class could be misbalanced. Yeah. And going too powerful is just as bad as going too weak if uh i mean on one hand like when we first started playing warlock to me looked like oh my gosh this why would you ever play warlock it's so pitiful but mm -hmm. once we kind of get into it a little bit it's a little it, it, it's kind of it seems to be balanced a little better whereas if you do a homebrew it may not have that time to grow and to really get play tested and even the uh the stuff that's in the books like with the unearthed arcana you get so much uh play test that the that the D and D and Wizards wants you to do and uh, the community gets a chance to like play test that to balance that out, make something that's, you know, cohesive with everything else that's in all the other books. Yeah. Like Dave said, homebrew classes are they're much harder to balance. Mm -hmm. Um because I mean you gotta think like the D and D team, they spent a lot of time doing this balancing classes working on all this stuff i mean they i mean they they some of them they haven't even gotten correct the first time looking at you ranger but overall i mean everything's pretty fairly balanced i feel mm -hmm. and and i think that's once you've played it some you kind of see that uh and that i think is a is kind of a pitfall for newer dms too is like yeah play homebrew you know play whatever yeah. it is you want to play yeah and uh it just what the worst thing that can happen to that, I think, is you get a player who's overpowered, and the rest of the party's like, "Well, why are we here?" Yeah, yeah, and, and that's, that's just not fun for anybody. Yeah, that's that's definitely something you'll want to avoid uh, because at the end of the day, D and D's a game. The dungeon master and the party, they're all players, and everybody wants to have fun. So, be considerate as a player, but also be considerate as a DM, because sometimes you're no might you know kind of ruin a player's outlook on the game but at the same time as a player you have to think well why are they saying no what is it that they're saying no to would it have a bad impact on the game so i, I would also throw into that that sometimes your dm's just a jerk that happens and that and the a person gets a little taste of that power they just want to kind of be jerks with it and it goes into it's so hard to find a really good group that is all on the same page when it comes yeah. to all this. I mean, we could probably do a separate video on just that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Of, of just trying to figure out how to get a nice group. And there's so many different personalities with, you know, every individual person. And it can be really tricky to kind of balance that because I think for the most part, D&D is trying to establish just camaraderie and. And, uh, you know, I don't, I'm sportsmanship, but that's not right. But just, you know, Sp sportsmanship works, yeah. you know, <laughs> you know, not, not being too, I mean, it's really not a competitive thing. It's even with the DM, cause it, you really don't necessarily want to get it towards DM versus the players. It should yeah. be everybody working toward a story together. Yeah. And if it gets to the point where it feels like the D it's DM versus players, that's something's probably wrong with somebody yeah. somewhere. In there. Yeah. Um, 
I... That's probably the DM's fault. It, it probably, yeah, it's the DM's <laughs> fault, yeah. Because um, I look in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> so this has been a quick look at why you should probably say no sometimes as the Dungeon Master. If you've got any stories about times you've said no, or maybe even said yes, let us know about it down in the comments. If you never want to miss a video from us, hit the subscribe button and ring the little bell to always get our notifications. And until next time, keep the dice rolling.